Hey, Underground, welcome back. This is Bree, and I'm here with some more stories uh, today. You get to hear from Michelle. And Michelle, you and Rob have a functioning, beautiful, thriving microchurch family in your neighborhood. And we're going to hear kind of like a specific story out of that family today. So we're going to hear kind of about couple number one and couple number two, and that'll make more sense to people as we get going here. So tell us about your relationship with couple number one and kind of how that evolved as they came into your spiritual family. Sure. Um, yeah, so we have had a extended spiritual family in our neighborhood for probably close to six years. And um, shortly after that, about maybe four years ago, this couple moved into our neighborhood. They're very, very young. Um, and it took us a while to get to know them because um, they're both kind of quiet and shy. But um, they actually hosted a couple of movies on their driveway, you know, in the summertime. And so then we invited them down and we did it in our backyard and um, just over time, you know, became closer friends with them and our entire neighborhood just really surrounded them. It was fun to have young people around. We feel like the old grandmas and grandpas or something. Um, but really, you know, just it was very nice to have um them around and to take care of and they took care of us and it was just wonderful yeah and they've been a part of your family for how long <clears throat> yeah probably four years um and one of them decided to get baptized uh, about three years ago and that was wonderful it was just a really neat um expression of that person's faith and mm -hmm. um really grew our community to um and we all kind of like grew a lot in love and understanding of why we are doing what we're doing, that this really is church. Um, it was very powerful and very special. Yes. Beautiful. Okay. Then you got the news. Yes. They so, were moving. Oh, tell us about that transition and what you were feeling. Yeah. So they got a huge pay raise and an offer to move across the country. Um, and being pseudo parents to, to them, you know, we're like, yay so proud of you but at the same time um our hearts just hurt a lot um they had a little <laughs> newborn baby that we were all excited about and everything um and so honestly like it really did feel like a sending out sending off um they were ready to go and i think this will be a good thing for them but yes we were very very sad yeah yep absolutely then I know that you guys um, kind of planned a going away party for them as you would for family, right? This is spiritual family. And then um, from my perspective, a unique thing happened yeah. within that. And so tell us what that unique thing is. Yeah. So um, houses in our area are going like crazy, you know? Um, so our friends put their house on the market and I think they said they had like nine or 10 offers that very day. Um on their house and they got to pick, who, you know, who they could sell their house to. And they kind of did like a little demographic check and they actually chose these people, um, for the reason <laughs> that they felt like these people would feel the love that they did in our neighborhood, mm -hmm. which is unbelievable. So, um, they had the closing of their house and this couple, couple number one invited couple number two to go to their goodbye party, which was actually a hello party for the new people. So it was amazing. Yeah. Yes. When I heard that from you, I just thought, okay, that could either be very potentially awkward mm -hmm. or such a beautiful thing. And I love that they kind of prayed through and handpicked these people to be in this home and in effect be in your spiritual family yeah. and then to invite them to their going away party it just is so beautiful yeah. i love it it was, it was something that rob and i had nothing to do with i mean we hosted the goodbye party but um these people did that on their own um which is another huge sign of maturity and it was a riot i mean like it was full-blown emotion people crying you know hugging and couple number two, they just sat there and smiled and took it all in. And um, I think they felt at home. Yes. And it, you know, makes you think, what were they thinking? But then <laughs> what happened just this weekend? Yeah. So um, we're just so grateful. Uh, another neighbor 
the two neighbors of ours decided to get baptized this weekend. And so yeah. we hosted another baptism in our, uh, our yard and couple number two came and that, again, totally completely on their own. And, um, you know, they, they just fit right in and, um, our hearts are warmed by having them. They're just very special people. And they obviously, um, they, they stuck around. So I'm glad we didn't scare them away. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, all right. Last question. Just describe to me the beauty that you see as you consider this situation. You can't make this stuff up. You know, this is so God. Yeah. I mean, it's so far above and beyond anything we could ask or imagine. Um, our little neighborhood microchurch is not perfect. We're not perfect people, but when we stand back and look at the big picture, we see how God has just been weaving this all through time and, you know, our last 10 years here and how he just keeps working and we just keep saying, okay, yes, next thing, you know, um, it's not easy, but it sure is uh, amazing and delightful when God does these miracles, just uh, it's fascinating and beautiful like you said yes well thank you to you and rob for your obedience and faithfulness mm -hmm. to um god's calling to your community your neighborhood and we just want to pray blessings over you guys awesome thank you all right thank you